Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I am your host, Tiffany Daniels. And yes, we are going back to that horrible world of the JRC. But before we get going this morning, folks, the usual disclaimers. As you know, on Tuesdays, the video always gets done in the morning because Monday is open chat. I have not had a decent crowd in a good long minute, folks. What's with that? Get the word out, okay? All right, so you are going to see the link to this report right there in the description box alongside the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, the templates, or me ever present, self-explanatory, change.org, shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. Now, folks, when we talk about the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. Got young children present. Please use your headphones. It is in the morning, folks. Yes, I'm still slightly brain dead. I'm overexhausted constantly. So if I stumble over my words this morning, my apologies in advance, all right? Now we're going back again in time, folks, to 1979. This is, again, a report from the New York Department of Education. Seem to be the only ones who do anything in regards to the JRC that's actually honest. But moving on. Students are rewarded through the morning with small bites of cold cereal and milk. Think about that, folks. Think about that. Think about the cereal you get for yourself in the morning. And then think about some asshole sitting next to you, making you perform menial tasks to earn every single bite of your breakfast. And they wonder why these kids get aggressive. And remember, folks, if they don't perform the menial tasks or they refuse, they don't get breakfast. Think about the insanity of that for five minutes. Throughout the afternoon with small bites of sandwiches or vegetables, and throughout the evening with bites of their dinner. Now think about this, folks. Would that not provoke behavior out of you? As sure as hell would provoke behavior out of me. We don't even do that to train animals, folks. We use treats. Yes, but we still give our pets their regular breakfast, lunch, dinner without expecting the pet to do tasks and earn, or to earn each bite of those meals. Think about the insanity of this for a minute. And I'll just leave that thought there to sit. Liquid rewards in the form of sips of milk or juice are interspersed with the food rewards. Again, this is insane. So you're not allowing these kids liquids without them performing. Think about that. Just think about that for a minute. Oh, we let them get regular drinks of water. You're still making them perform like a circus money monkey to get something that it has actual nutritional value. They have to earn nutritional value. God, and courts think this is okay? For most youngsters, the food rewards are kept in small plastic dishes and fed into their mouths on plastic spoons by treatment workers. Again, how more condescending can you get? How is this supposed to promote independence? How is this supposed to support them being able to be productive in society? When you don't even allow them to feed themselves. When you feed them like they are babies. And it's for rewards. How, how is that supposed to support independence? This whole program not only traumatizes students, but makes them utterly dependent upon the staff. 
It develops the unhealthy habit of being completely dependent on somebody else instead of promoting self-awareness and an independent streak. This is how so many people with disabilities are so easily taken advantage of by unscrupulous people of this world. Because it's not just a JRC who teaches this way. This is format ABA, folks. It teaches dependence. It teaches the person to never say no. It leaves them vulnerable to abuse and for people taking advantage of them later on in life. In fact, going this far renders someone completely helpless. So how they can remedy that and say that this promotes independence, I don't know. It makes no logical sense. Liquids were administered in paper cups, either by a treatment worker or by the child himself. Oh, good. At least you let some of them drink for themselves. Some liquid reinforcement was squirted into the children's mouths from a plastic spray, spray bottle. Again, I will say it again. How does this promote independence? How does this help develop independent living skills? How does this help the child progress to be, quote unquote, a productive member of society, it doesn't, folks. It doesn't. Not in any way conceivable. Adversive techniques are administered immediately as a consequence for an identified and appropriate behavior. One New York child has 35 behaviors identified as punishable. A complete list of target behaviors and the established adversive consequences is attached to this report. It represents a type copy of the daily checklist, which is taped to each student's table. A sample of an original hard written checklist is also attached. Think about this. Again, we live in this world, this ABA world, the gold standard, where we punish a behavior instead of taking the logical step of trying to find out what is causing the behavior. Nobody goes to the root of the problem anymore. When all you're trying to do is just treat the behaviors, but you're not looking into what is causing the behaviors, you're not solving the problem. You're putting a Band-Aid on it. This is the sort of thing that causes burnout in so many of us later on in life. Okay, but let's go ahead and read through it. In order of severity, the aversive consequences used at BRI are as follows. Ignore behavior, affirm no, token fine. Gotta love that stick and carrot. Water sprayed in the face. Spanks or spanks to the buttocks. Spank or spanks on the thigh. Pinch to the buttocks. Pinch to the hand. Pinch on the bottom of the foot. Muscle squeeze, thigh muscle. Muscle squeeze, shoulder muscle. Brief cool shower, 55 degrees for 30 seconds. God. Newly designed adversives. Ammonia pellet to the nose. Timeout helmet with either or both. Think about it. You're going to give someone an ammonia pellet and then put a helmet on them. And you wonder how people like Vincent Militech died of asphyxiation? Facial screen attached to the front of the helmet that eliminates vision and a masking noise, white noise sounded in the earphones of the helmets to eliminate hearing of ordinary sounds. Yes, because that's not sensory hail. We're going to close it out on this, but the whole logic of ABA and the JRC is ultimately flawed. I've said it once. I've said it a thousand times. I will say it again. The absolute flaw in all of ABA is punishing or rewarding quote unquote behaviors instead of finding out what induces positive or negative behaviors. 
as anyone with half a little bit, just a half a brain cell. And logic would look into. Because if an, something is causing a positive behavior, you would want to reinforce that and repeat that. If something is causing a negative behavior, you would want to find out what that is and deal with the root problem in which you would get a natural, logical reduction in said inappropriate behavior. But we don't live in a world of logic, folks. We live in a world that is completely ran on nothing but emotions, which everybody else gets to express and then claim is fact, except for us. So, I'm going to go ahead and close out on that note. We don't get very many views on this channel, especially on this subject, and the few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So, folks, please don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this morning, and as always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye, everyone.